In this video, we're going to study how people generate different types of waste. Okay, but before that, let's define some terms. When we say solid, liquid, and gas waste, we are referring to the byproducts resulting from human biological processes, manufacturing, materials processing, consumption of goods, or any other human activity. This does not include the processing and storage facilities for such waste. This does not include any latent waste released into or present in the environment. So when we say latent waste, they are the hidden waste. They are the concealed waste, not yet declared as waste. Next is leachate. When other people hear the word leachate, they think of small polluted stream of water. Others might think of landfills and the problems caused by the unsustainable disposal of waste material for decades. So leachate is the fluid percolating through the landfills and is generated from liquids present in the waste and from outside water, including rainwater percolating through the waste. I don't understand. I don't understand, bitch. I don't understand. Basically, it is any liquid that, in the course of passing through matter, extracts soluble or suspended solids or any other component of the material through which it has passed. Next word is eutrophication. It is characterized by excessive plant and algal growth. So it looks like this. This is due to the increased availability of one or more limiting growth factors needed for photosynthesis, which includes sunlight, carbon dioxide, and nutrient fertilizers. It occurs when the environment becomes enriched with nutrients such as nitrogen. It occurs naturally, but human activities have accelerated the rate and extent of eutrophication through both point source discharges and non-point loadings of limiting nutrients, again, such as nitrogen and phosphorus into aquatic systems. This is called cultural eutrophication. The next word is siltation. Siltation is a process by which water becomes dirty as a result of fine mineral particles in the water. So basically, they are sediments. Okay. Next is acid mine drainage. It is the runoff produced when water becomes in contact with exposed rocks containing sulfur-bearing minerals that react with water and air to form sulfuric acid and dissolve iron. Okay, I'm genuinely already about to cry. Am I okay? Acid mine drainage dissolves heavy metals including copper, lead, and mercury which pollute ground and surface water. So it looks like this. Nowadays, we are suffering environmental dilemmas such as global warming, flash floods, and etc. The main culprit of this is improper waste disposal. Is the disposal of waste in a way that has negative consequences for the environment? Possible hazards associated with improper waste disposal include pollution of bodies of water, loss of habitat, Clogging, which can cause flooding. Unsanitary conditions leading to spread of disease. Burning of waste, which can release toxic gases. And it also affects the natural beauty of the environment. To solve this problem, there are government regulations. One includes Republic Act Number no. 9003, which is the Ecological Solid Waste Management Act. It is an act providing for an ecological solid waste management program, creating the necessary institutional mechanism and incentives, declaring certain acts prohibited and providing penalties, appropriating funds therefore and for other purposes. So this includes littering, burning in open space, and squatting in open dumps and landfills. So this is the Payatas Landfill. It is one of the many garbage dump sites in Metro Manila. On the 10th of July 2000, a landslide of garbage killed 218 people living on the dump site, 
with 300 people still missing. So the question is, why is there a need for dump sites? Dump sites allow the correct disposal of solid urban waste. They have a large waste reception capacity. They reduce the risk of environmental pollution. Dump sites keep water, the soil, and the air protected. They preserve the quality of life for the future generations. They prevent, they prevent disease transmission and reduce the risk of fire. So, can landfills cause pollution to the local environment? Yes, leachate from landfills can contaminate groundwater if not properly managed. It can cause soil contamination and the production and release of methane. It can also cause soil contamination and the production and release of methane from the decomposition of organic matter. So it looks like this. So from the landfill, the leachate will go to the bottom and then straight to the river. This slide shows the other activities which are prohibited under the RA number 9003. Okay, so now let's discuss other sources of waste and their environmental impact. The first one is the industrial waste. These are wastes released from manufacturing plants such as a chemical plant, cement production, textile industries, metallurgical plants, textile food, etc. This table shows the different products under industrial wastes and their hazardous wastes. So for medicine, we have the organic solvents and residues, as well as the heavy metals. For metals, we have the fluorides, cyanides, etc. For paints, mostly pigments and solvents. For leather, we have the organic solvents and heavy metals, and etc. Next is the agricultural waste. So they are from excess use of fertilizers and pesticides which can cause land and water pollution. So for example, rice paddies release methane to the atmosphere. Rice paddies look like this, okay? A paddy field is a flooded field of arable land used for growing semi-aquatic crops, most notably rice and taro. So the methane in rice paddies is produced by microscopic organisms that respire carbon dioxide. Agricultural waste is also caused by excess excrement from poultry and other livestock, which can cause eutrophication of bodies of water. Next, we have the mining waste. So these are waste generated from the exploitation of mineral resources. So we have two kinds. The first one is the overburdened material. They are ground substances that are removed to extract the mineral deposit. The release of overburdened material to the environment is a result of improper management which can cause saltation of bodies of water. The other one is the acid mine drainage, which we discussed a while ago. So the water that has come to contact with oxidized rock or overburden that contains sulfide material such as coal, zinc, copper, and lead. So when acid mine drainage is not properly managed, it can find its way into waterways and the ground water. Anyways. So when the pH of water is high, this can be detrimental to plant and animal life. Acid mine drainage is also associated with the release of heavy metals to the environment. Lastly, we have the biomedical waste. So they are wastes generated by hospitals and other healthcare institutions. This type of hazardous waste includes infectious waste and chemical waste dangerous to people and the environment. So this is how you segregate solid biomedical waste. So in the black container, you have the chemical waste and cytotoxic drugs. In the red container, you have the soiled waste, which includes infected dressings. In the blue container, you have the anatomical waste. This includes placenta, pathological waste, and body parts. Wait! 
In the blue container, you have the infected plastics, such as syringes. And for the white container, you have the sharps, the needles, and the glasses, etc. So after you segregate them, they will be transported to common treatment facility.